There we go. I'm here. All right. Hi, everybody. Hey, Laura. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday Notary Titans for Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. My name is Bill Soroka. I'm the founder of notarycoach.com and author of the Amazon bestselling book, Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent. I'm just one of your hosts today. Our co-host needs no introduction. Carol Ray, founder of Notary to Pro, the most recognized certification in the industry. Carol, thanks for being here. Thanks for bringing your workers with us too, with you too. <laughs> <laughs> They're very busy. How's it going, Carol? I'm glad we have you. What's what are you excited oh, about this week? Finally, this house is beautiful. And after what we've been through for three, almost four months now, I am I just couldn't be more excited. It's all coming together now. They're putting in a new shower in one of the bathrooms right now, skirting on my husband's office. Lots of stuff going on, and, and they're great. So Awesome. And so oh, and by the way, you talk yeah. about the hundred thousand. You you talk about the hundred thousand. I have one of my students, honest to God, she made this last year. Get ready for it. Three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Been at it for two years. That is unbelievable. <laughs> I never <laughs> made that much money. <laughs> That's life-changing money life changing money. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's just unbelievable. But, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. And our third co-host, Laura Bewer, founder of coachmelaura.com, the Laura Bewer presents training and replay library and so much more. Laura, how's it going? Pretty good. It has been quite the day. I started early and I'm just now getting to breakfast maybe after this. <laughs> it's been one of those days I had a lot to do and sometimes you just got to get on it and stay with it till it's done. So all is good in my neck of the woods. I've been able to be very helpful today to some callers, surprise callers that I had. And it really challenged me and my knowledge because it was, uh, it had to do with foreign real estate, but out of the country and whether or not Ron works and whether options there were and the properties in California. And there was just a lot of complexities. And I had to really stretch myself to make sure I could think of all, all the possible permutations of what could go wrong um, with different choices. So it was an interesting call. And I love uh, problem solving. Tell us, me. Tell us about the baby. Okay, and so uh, um, Silas, those of you who knew two weeks ago, today he's two weeks old, and he's finally got his eyes open more of the time. He's being a little stinker between 8 p.m. and 1 a.m., so they haven't got that worked out yet, but they will get it worked out. I've seen him in person two times, six feet away with a mask. I'm not allowed to hold him yet, so uh, that time will come, but in the meantime, Mimi is on the job. I love it. I love it. Now another nickname for Laura, Mimi. <laughs> I love it. Um, awesome. Well, guys, we've got a great show for you today. Uh, one thing, though, I'm pretty excited. I got all kinds of cool stuff coming up. But one thing I wanted to share with you guys today, because um, I'm honored to participate in it, is the eWomen Network, uh, which is a huge international uh, networking program. It's not just for women. It just happens to have the name eWomen Network because it started out that way. Men are welcome to join as well. But I'll be presenting and speaking online via Zoom uh, next Wednesday uh, to that organization. And we get to talk about something um, a different than notary work or even loan signing work. Of course, that's part of my existence and who I am. So it's all tied in there. But we're going to be able to talk about going from side hustle to YouTuber, to online course creator, to best-selling author, to um, now podcast host, and lots of stuff in between, and just talking about creating that type of experience. And I get to share that with that network. If you'd like to participate, I'm going to post that into the chat. It's a registration. I think there's a charge for it. I think they're charging for it, but I don't know for sure, but I posted that link in there for you. If anybody care to join for a different kind of conversation for today, let's talk about 
notary stuff. Let's geek out. Uh, the way this works is it's uh, pretty much an old fashioned radio show. Raise your hand, use the raise hand feature in Zoom. If you don't know how to do that, post it into the chat. And we have an amazing community of people who will guide you through it. It kind of depends on the version of Zoom that you have. We're gonna get through as many questions as possible. About halfway through, I'm gonna invite Samantha Smith from the Georgia Notary Network to come on. She's got some exciting news for us as well. So if you're in Georgia or really in any attorney state, I'm gonna introduce you to Samantha because she's an amazing resource uh, for you guys. Uh, as we call on you, uh, please unmute, tell us what state you're in, ask your question. And then if we need additional backup information or anything like that, Carol, Laura, or myself will ask for that as well. All right, let's jump in. Uh, Randy Ventures, you're the first name I see on my list. You want to unmute. Tell us what state you're in and how we can help. I'm in Washington. And right. my, question, uh, my question is about verifying IDs um, when the pictures don't look like the person on the ID. So in 2020, the state of Washington stopped doing uh, renewals for a short period when COVID started. And then for the majority of the year, they decided they were just going to process renewals by mail and not take new pictures of people and just mail them a new ID with their picture from that was on their ID previously, which could possibly be seven to 10 years old. Um, and I really ran into it last week. I had a, a scenario where the lady just got her, her license renewed um, at the end of 2020. And she looked nothing like the picture the lady in the picture because the lady in the picture was about 150 pounds heavier than the lady I was sitting with. And so my question is, I could obviously tell the ID was real by looking at the watermarks and uh, all the, the security features, but how kind of how do we handle that when, and I know Arizona is another state that licenses are, are good for a really long time. Yeah. Kind of how do you handle that when they don't look like anything like, the, you don't think they look like anything like the, the person in the picture? Yeah, what a great question. And yeah. um, for me, I like to have a conversation about it. I like to say, okay, here, what, here's what I'm looking at. It doesn't look like you, what happened? And I like to actually engage in that conversation. And I like what Stacy says, um, or, oh, I thought I saw it. But anyway, I like to uh, start that conversation. There might be a congratulations in order. It might be a chance for a relationship. I also like to ask, can you just restate your birth date for me? Something from the ID uh, that shows that they, they know the information and they might actually be the person. Laura, I'd love to hear your, your, uh, opinion on this as sure. well so a couple things and of course um starting with where you started bill which is i pointed out and say wow something's changed tell me about it so you know i i, I put it out that i recognize something's not the same and give them an opportunity to share with me why there's such a difference the second thing that i also do uh is ask for them to restate something that I would find on their ID. They'll use the date of birth. It could be what's your zip code. It could be any piece of information. Another thing that I would do is I would check some of the other physical descriptions that are not as likely to be changeable. So if they're five foot five, they're probably still five foot five, not six foot tall, not five foot tall. So I look for other types of inconsistencies. If they had brown eyes, they may have lost weight, but they probably still have brown eyes, right? So I just look for things less likely to be different. And then finally, um, I, I ask, what's in your wallet? Do you got anything else that shows me with this name, with you, how you look now? So these are all these uh, beyond, you know, the security feature business is, is it a, a good card um, to reconcile variation that I see between the person in front of me uh, and the ID I'm being presented. Awesome. Carol, any additional feedback from you on your on that side? No, I think Laura pretty much hit it, but I got a, a kick out of it. She said, what's in your wallet? Because I, know. I expect them to come up and say, oh, I have a card, one card. Yeah. <laughs> but I no, that's, that I, I would do exactly what she did. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Good question, Randy. Renee C. from Texas. 
We already know where you're from. How can we help? Hi. Um, so I have a question. Um, this is my first time doing a real estate uh or I should say estate planning documents. I, I talked to Carol when I was doing this last week, but I just have a question. So on the durable power of attorney, um, there is basically um, an oath that you're giving to the personal signer. In this situation, there were two signers, two witnesses. Um, so after the oath is given, there was the line for the principal to sign. Under that, it basically gave a type of verification. Like, you know, I'm 18 years and older, I'm not related to the principal, blah, blah, blah. And then those witnesses actually signed that. Mm -hmm. So when I'm writing this information in my journal, is that really what they call a verification? Um, I'm just wanting to know how I should indicate that in my journal. Because on the next page after that was an actual, um, you know, uh, jurat that I that I signed that I notarized. Mm -hmm. Laura, is this clear for you? Yeah. So I see this all the time in last wills, uh, but I also see it uh, can see it in uh, powers of attorney where you've got the principal signer signature, then you've got some witnesses. And it looks like the document might be done, but then there's another statement with more places for signature and then the jurat. And that jurat is to uh, give an oath and certify the signatures of the people who sign below that extra statement. Sometimes it's called a testamentary affidavit. Sometimes it's called a self-proving affidavit. Sometimes it's called an attestation clause. It might even have another name but it's typically an additional statement signed by the witnesses, sometimes the principal and the witnesses, and that's the notarization part. Everything before that. So if, you're, if you are uh, recording in your journal, uh, every act for every document, you would have all three of them, if all three of them were signing it, you would have three line entries for them, and it is whatever that section is called, if there's a name for it, Right, you would record it as you would any notarization. Okay, and I, I did, um, yeah, I, I just didn't know what to call it. I guess I called it a verification, but like you said, it might be called a testamentary attestation. It didn't really give a name there. Uh, and if it isn't, then you can describe it. Cause you know, some documents don't have names and we have to describe what the document is. So um, it, it, the name of the document is a power of attorney and this was statement by the witnesses or you just give a description of that section. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, nice specific question, Renee, thank you. Trina Harvey, thanks for being here. You wanna unmute, tell us what state you're in and how we can help. Okay. I'm Trina, I'm in the state of California in Northern California. All right. And my question is, I am interested in doing notarizations uh, that are for attorneys that are living trust. How do I go about marketing myself for that? Yeah, great, great question. So um, awesome niche. And um, I know Laura, this is right up your alley as well with your Laura Buer Presents. Just so everybody knows, Laura has designed and created an incredible resource called Laura Buer Presents. It's the training and replay library where she talks about these types of specific documents. And as part of the training, like it's super specific in the documents and how to do it, but it's also how to get more of it. So I just wanna make sure everybody knows that's out there. And I'll post a link for it in the, in the chat window there. But remember too, this is always gonna come down to relationships. If you're, go if you're looking to work with attorneys, that do that type of paperwork, then the same process we would use to cultivate relationships with escrow officers or any anybody, you are gonna apply to the attorneys. So what's real important, I know Laura, I'm gonna pass this over to you because you're really good at this, but you wanna learn how to speak their language. What types of verbiage is important to them in navigating estate planning? And then 
cultivate that relationship, staying in touch with them the same way that we would do, like I said, for escrow officers. The other important thing too, is that I found in my personal experience is that attorneys love referrals. They are very concerned with how you are, how, how you're representing them at any type of table or when you're knocking on doors. So if they can get a referral from another attorney or if they can see you uh, like through video marketing or a Zoom call or something that shows how you dress and how you present yourselves, that goes over really well. Laura, do you have more specifics you'd like to throw in there too? Well, I just want to um, expand first on uh, the lingo. Uh, and that means document knowledge. And that is what I do in my Laura B. Represents. So if you're not familiar with the common documents that are found in uh, living trusts, then that's where you want to start is make sure you're knowledgeable because you don't want to talk to them when you don't even really know what their business is about. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing, Bill just mentioned um, re a referral, but obviously you need to have an attorney to refer you. But I'm thinking also about referrals from your clients who happen to, you're there for a different reason. And they mention, hey, you probably notarize these kinds of documents. Do you know an attorney who prepares living trusts in town? I do get those kind of questions. And so I can refer them to the attorneys that I already work for in terms of notarizing them. So okay. when I have an opportunity to hook up a client, my client uh, to an attorney in town, that's another way because when they see I send business their way, they're more inclined to send business my way. Um, another way that I uh, get the work, of course, is just through my internet presence. And a lot of times uh, an attorney will prepare the documents, send it to the, the owner of the documents and tell them, get, get, go get a notary. And they have to go find their own notary. So how are they gonna find me? They're gonna Google that, right? Notary near me. And you know, do you have a website? Do you have a Google page? Do you have a Yelp page? Do you have other ways in which you come up on the search engines, whether that's on a paid registry like 123 Notary, which of course that would be in your profile there. Um, all of those different points that lead to you. All right, so okay. I talk about that and I, and I talk about seminar companies. So lots of ways. Okay. I love that you brought up SEO, Laura, because that's going to be, so number one, relationships, but your search engine optimization, how likely your website or your information pops up in a Google search when somebody types notary near me has a direct impact on your success and longevity in this business. If you're going to do spe specialty notary work, you've got to be able to show up on Google. You got to get to that first page. If you're on page 15, it's not going to do any good. Nobody gets to page 15. You want to be in that first five listings if you can, but at least the first page, you're going to have a really good chance of getting business. Okay. Awesome. Great question. Loved it. Uh, is it Shayla? Shayla Zimmerman? Yes, it is. All right, Shayla. Thanks for being here. What state are you in and how can we help? Um, I'm in Colorado. And I was curious, how long do you all generally keep emails in your um, inbox? Because I tend to be an email pack rat and I'm beginning to think that that's probably not such a great thing in this field. Carol, what do you think on this? Let me unmute here. I hope the workers are too loud in a minute. Um, I, I keep important emails, something that I might have to refer to at some point in time. I keep them for, for sometimes years. It depends on, on the importance of them. It has something to do with the signing that you had that you may have some difficulty with and somebody's advised you always get the advice in on email, get it in writing, cover, cover your you know what. And if you have situations like that, I keep those because you never know when something's gonna come up six months from now, a year from now, and that's gonna be your saving grace. Um, the others, you know, personal emails and, and things that really don't matter, get rid of, they're just clogging up your drain. I'd like to expand on what Carol said. Please. Um, about that. And, and that is, uh, I too keep the same kinds of emails that she talked about and, and others. 
uh, but I organize them and I take them out of my email box, my inbox. And I have one for loan documents and one for general work and one for resources and one for Bill and one for Carol and one for uh, mentoring students and one for, and I must have like 20 some files that are specific to the type of work like auto signings, I keep different from. So it's easier for me to find those things because it doesn't help me to keep anything if I can't find it later, which when it's just sitting in my inbox is a problem. Because I even when I do that, I probably at any given time could have 50 emails still in my, my inbox because I'm, I'm thinking I'm not done with it yet. Uh, and then it gets buried. So I think it's important that if you think it's important enough to hold on to it, find a place for it. Yeah, I too do have that. I probably have 50 folders in my Gmail accounts. Uh, okay, and I think that's really great advice. And I will also say that um, I have 50 to 10,000 folders that I never use in mine. I have the brain that won't do that. I think I, I think really organized, but I just don't. So I have a very cluttered inbox. And just so you know, that's okay. This is a judgment-free zone. Judgment-free. <laughs> did that help, Shayla? It did, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Beth McCauley, thanks for being here. What state are you in and how can we help? I'm Beth McCauley, Orange County, California. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. Perfect. My question is a little bit for Laura and Carol. Um, so for Laura, when you're working with those law firms, you mentioned in the state of California, there's some documents we're not allowed to do. So is there anything particular for that, for the states and, you know, advanced healthcare directors and everything that goes in a trust that we're not able to do in California? I know it's a little specific. I, you would have to be specific with me because I do not recall one document in a trust that we are not allowed to do if it's got a notarization on it. Other oh, than, than wills, which are, no, which are witness, there are documents in California we cannot handle, but it had nothing to do with living trust. Oh, sorry. So maybe what those documents are then, those few that- the As in an I-9 form? Is that what you okay. mean? Sure. Just, yeah, just in general, I heard you say certain documents we cannot notarize so, in California, and I wasn't sure what you meant. Well, there's a difference between notarizing and I can't handle them at all. So uh, an I-9 is not notarized anyways, but in California, notaries aren't even allowed to do what is appropriate for them. Another one is called a certification of life. And that's where a pensioner is living here, but they're from another country and that country wants to verify they're alive. And that's not a statement I can make. There are some workarounds, but not always. So that's a difficult deal. Another document would be uh, one that has a prohibited act for me. Like I can't do signature witnessing. And if that's the recording law and that's needed, they're going to have to figure out something else to do for me to help them. So those would be some examples. Okay, excellent. And um, just the part two of that, maybe it's for Carol, is when you're doing your search engine optimization and you're doing your Yelp and Google page, I know that you mentioned Barbara, Carol, you mentioned Barbara does um, websites and things like that. Does she handle a lot of this as well? So like if I wanted to do a Google page or a Yelp page or something like that. Would Barbara also handle that, Carol, or is it more so just the website? It's more for the website. Um, I actually have somebody who helps me with those things, which I'm not very good at, which is the group groups and, you know, getting on to you, uh, the Yelp and all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Barbara's wonderful at the websites and she does the SEO stuff. So your websites come up. Oh, you muted out again, Carol. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, she's terrific at the website's design and, and SEO and all of that. Uh, but you, you kind of, if you want to really get someone who helps you with your social media, it's a whole different ball of wax, in my opinion, um, that helps you out there. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good day, right. everybody. Thanks, Beth. All right, Jenny Watkins, thank you so much for being here. You want to unmute, tell us what state you're in and how we can help. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm in North Carolina right. and I'm new. I've been receiving some signings from signing order. And I was wondering about like your thank you cards. Am I poaching if I send a thank you to the attorney's office that's sending me the docs? Great question. Um, 
So if you're being hired by a signing company, so signing order is a platform. So it could be an attorney is actually using that platform for their own appointments, or it could be a signing company that has a relationship with an attorney who's got that business and they're using the platform. So if a, a signing company is hiring you and you send a thank you card to direct to the attorney or the escrow officer, it can be perceived as poaching. And in this, in, along this line, um, perception is reality. So you don't want to cross that line. But if, if it's an attorney directly, he owns the company, he's working with his own clients, he just happens to use the platform signing order to distribute his signings, you could absolutely send him a thank you card. You just okay. don't want it to look like you're trying to steal somebody's client. Okay. That's what it comes down to. Carol, do you have any more insight that you'd offer on that or even Laura? Oh, I think Carol's coming on. You're muted still. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's... All right. Is she... Are you this coming? Okay, too okay. It's, it's too loud, she says. Laura, did you have any, any additional feedback on that? No, I mean, really what you said I think nails it. I don't okay. need to repeat that. Yeah. The, um, the, I think the best use of thank you cards are in a direct type of relationship and to the signers. I love staying in touch with the signers. I'll send them a thank you card or a nice to meet you or congratulations or um, whatever the situation calls for. And sometimes it's grief too, you know, whatever that situation calls for. Okay. Does that help clarify? Yeah. I was just, um, looking into some of the the like thank you cards apps and stuff and they can be pretty pricey so i guess i'll wait maybe until i have more business going um, yeah, in the very beginning right you're you're not it's not like you're packed full of 12 signings a day right so you maybe yeah. get one or two so handwriting cards is still it's inexpensive and it's easy to do and it's really meaningful it's impactful when they get them as you okay. start generating some revenue and you start realizing I don't have as much time, I need something more efficient, then you could invest in send out cards or uh, some of those others that are out there now too. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Guys, I'm going to take a quick pause here and just invite Samantha Smith from the Georgia Notary Network. Samantha, are you here? Yes, sir. I am here. Hi, right, Samantha. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. It's an exciting week for you, I know. Um, and we're gonna tell everybody about your, your new book. I think you did an amazing job with it. I wonder if you could just tell a little bit about the Georgia Notary Network, some of the relationships you have going on and why it was so important for you to, to get a Nor Georgia specific program going. Gotcha. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be on the platform. Um, as always, you have amazing guests, awesome attendees, and invaluable information. And so this is just super. Um, and I feel like I am literally in the best company right now. Um, my name is Samantha Smith, and I'm the owner of She Listens Notary and Business Services in Southeast Georgia. And when I became a notary, uh, I just noticed that there was a huge lack and gap as it related to information, training, guidance, uh, support, and I wanted to um, answer the call or answer, be a resource for that gap. And so as I started doing my homework, started really digging into what it was that uh, the responsibilities of the Georgia notary, of course, that uh, dreaded nasty two word phrase attorney state popped up and you know there were so many people who were just discouraged by the attorney state law as most are when they you know enter the industry uh, in an attorney state so as i just continued to dig and research um, I, I took a lot of guidance from sign and thrive about um, becoming the resource trying to become the expert in your field and so um, it, it just literally, there was just literally an echoing call for something to happen. So I got together with some other amazing notaries in Georgia, and we have created the organization called the Georgia Notary Network. Uh, we just call it GAN for short. And what we have been able to do is just 
pool our resources, brainstorm, and we have just made some really amazing connections to hopefully move Georgia forward with more training, with more standardized practices, and more, most importantly, more support for the industry that is the loan signing, mobile notary or notice, notary signing industry. I love your, I love that you are on a mission with your commission and you are helping so many other notaries in Georgia really become a success. Now, I'm uh, really kind of proud of your book, Samantha, as you should be too. She just released a brand new ebook uh, called Mapping Out Your Commission, the resource guide to getting your notary business started in Georgia. And mm -hmm. so it's very, very specific. I know there's not going to be on this particular call, a lot of Georgia notaries, but there are a lot of loving and supportive notaries that uh, have gone out um, on a limb on their own. And they know what it's like to put yourself out there, whether it's a book or a course or a YouTube channel. And I think this is a great opportunity, even if you're outside of Georgia, just to show some love and support to one of our own. Uh, Samantha Smith, doing good work. I'm going to post a link to the book uh, in the chat window. If you'd like to support her, that's the best way you can support an artist or an influencer or a creator. I'm going to post that in there. Samantha, thank you for all the work that you do. And if there's anything else we can do to support you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much, Bill. You guys have a great day and safe signings. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll post that link yeah. here in just a moment. Can I add something to that? Please do, Carol, yes. Just really for Samantha. Samantha, we have a lot of graduates there. I would love to talk to you about your group and see if we can't get you a lot more members, uh, Notary to Pro uh, graduates. They're doing really well there. And I know that they love to find your group. So uh, maybe Bill will give me your email address and I can con contact you, okay? Yes, ma'am, most definitely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's get some more questions answered. Anthony, Gary, thank you so much for being here. You want to unmute. Tell us what state you're in and how we can help. Thank you, Bill, Carol, and Laura, and everybody else in attendance. My name is Anthony Gary, and I'm here in Los Angeles, California. So a really quick two-part question. I wanted to see if Laura, um, if unclaimed funds, well, the unclaimed fund forms were a part of your training library. Um, and then if, if it is, or if not, I mean, there might be somebody else on the call who can answer this, but do you know of helping people as um, air, air agents or finding agents would be considered unlawful practice uh, of law in California? Interesting question. Laura, what yeah, do you think? I, well, I really just have a hard time hearing him. It wasn't coming through. Could you restate his question, Bill? Um, I, well, it garbled up for me too a little bit, but it's regarding yeah. the uh, unclaimed funds form. Yeah, uh, so that is notarized with the jurat. There's no problem with the notary uh, notarizing that. It's not our job to help them fill it out. Uh, the instructions, I think, are pretty clear on what to do. I'm not quite sure what your question is. Anthony, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, Did definitely. I miss can, it? You, can you hear me now? Oh, you're yeah. way clear. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, doing a little bit of research on the Secretary of State's website, as well as the, the controller. Um, so every state has an unclaimed funds mm -hmm. law. And um, in the state of California it specifically says notaries can, or uh, an air agent can be a notary, or they can help people um, locate these funds, as well as uh, charge a fixed fee that can't exceed 10%. Um, while doing that. But I, I'm just a little bit confused on whether actually helping them um, locate that fund, those funds, because technically they're going to do most of the, the, the filling out of the forms themselves. Like I wouldn't fill out the form because I don't have that information. My job really is to verify their identity, which they need in order to, to, uh, to I guess, process that claim. Um, and I'm not really... I would say that interested in, in the, the fee part or the, the agent part, it's really um, using it as a, a service to kind of put my notary business out there and specialize in something that's a little bit different that a lot of people don't do. And then there's a, a large database of people you already know you are your customers. So my question is um, in your experience, uh, 
would that be considered uh, unlawful practice by uh, locating those people, letting them know, um, and then sending them the forms uh, that are already public information uh, and uh, helping them through that process? So I, I think you need to separate your notary hat from this other type of business uh, because it has nothing to do with that. Um, being a notarizing a document is one thing and being a notary. Uh, as notaries, we have many other businesses we do. Uh, and if we have training on how to do that properly, so we have the right form, we know the right procedure because we've had training on doing that. And then we're doing that as a business I don't see that as the unauthorized practice of law, just like when I facilitate apostille work or I facilitate the adoption work. Um, whether or not I happen to be a notary really isn't important because anybody could help them do that. It's not that a notary, they're not saying you need a notary to help you do that. The notary commission has nothing to do with locating the funds or sending them the form. That's, that's a separate business. Now, if as a notary, you're, that's a notary service you're providing, meaning it's under that, uh, that notary title, then no, don't be doing those things. Then it could be mistaken that you're trying to help the client uh, too far. You need to keep them separate, sense. separate things. Right. That, that was, I guess that was my, uh, my concern in it. Thank you. Yeah, what a great question. And thanks for bringing another idea, which is just what I need to uh, the platform here. That's, that's awesome, didn't yeah. even think of that. Good thinking. Uh, thanks for being I, here, Anthony. Yeah. Bill, before Laura? we go on, I do handle those forms and there are some companies that that's what they do. Awesome. What he just described. I think that's what Matt was referencing in the chat too, is there's companies that do this already. So you might be able right. to latch on to those. Uh, Phil Shannon, pleasure seeing you here. What's going on in Cal? You're in California, right? You got sunshine. I have sunshine, Bill, but it's very chilly, as you can tell by the jacket. Uh, but I just wanted to just reach out and thank you and Laura again for always being such a such a great advocate for what I do and what I'm so excited to be doing for 36 years. And also mentioned to the folks, many of them were on the meetup that we did Saturday a week, uh, ten, nine days ago or so. And I did everything in my power to make sure I got information to every single person but there were a lot of people. And if I missed anybody, please, I apologize. And I saw Tracy Stahl, thank you for reaching out and saying, please give me some information. If I missed anybody else, I just want to apologize and say, uh, please reach out again and I'll do the best to, to get everybody the information they requested. That's all I got, Bill. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Phil. We know you will. Bruce, thanks so much for being here. You want to unmute? Tell us what state you're in and how we can help. There you go. Uh, hello, Bill and Miss Ray. My name is Bruce Crescenta. I'm from Arizona. All right. Uh, and this is a new uh, venture for me. So I'm looking forward to getting in contact with Ronnie Mickle this week and saying I'm ready to take orders and go through the process, the beginning process with him. Um, I'm in Notary Stars, Miss Ray, and um, I've heard some conflicting things from another trainer in there named Edie. And she was going over purchase documents and where you initial over the deed, the, the, uh, um, the statutory deed or whatever that deed is called, depending upon where you are. And um, she said that you just need to have it initialed even though there's a notary block below. Does that, does that, form in fact need to be notarized i guess i think they're talking about the deed of trust carol yeah the deed of trust she's gonna unmute i think oh she might you're you're still muted oh gosh there you go there we go um you know what i have started to uh teaching my students something that is absolutely vital and that is listen to your documents they're going to tell you what to do if there's no initials required don't initial it don't take it upon yourself to decide whether somebody needs to sign or initial or whether something needs to fill out, be filled out by you. 
listen to your documents. I, I, I hear this so much. I'll get these calls and they'll say, well, there's no place for me to notarize. So what do I do? Don't notarize it. It's just so simple, just common sense. So if you hear conflicting things, let the documents teach you what to do. It'll, it'll not got, it'll, it'll let you know every time if you're right or wrong. On this particular document, there's a place to initial at the top of the deed, and then also a notary box below. And um, Edie said not to notarize it, but I think Ronnie said to notarize it. If there's a notar notarial uh, a block in there? Yes, ma'am. Certificate, then yes, you need to notarize it. Okay. That's the kind of questions I get daily. Uh, because it can be very fuse confusing when you're new. So that's what I tell people. Let the documents be your teacher. Just yes, follow can I pop in there real quick and answer? Because I know exactly what he's talking about. And oh, yeah, talking. Beth, you work with Ronnie. Go ahead. Yeah, the only thing, Bruce, is that I think you're confusing. When you said a purchase package, that warranty deed is for the seller. So when you have a warranty deed and a purchase package, we're just having the buyer initial where it says read and approve um, just so that they are aware that that warranty deed is going to be filed, moving the purchase from the current owner to him or her. So that would be a correct answer in Edie's class. Oh, so the, the, cl the clarification there, Bruce, is that the warranty deed that you're, you don't notarize somebody who's not sitting in front of you. So the seller is not the one sitting in front of you. So you wouldn't actually be the, the notary in that part of the transaction. That's probably what it got a little confusing. Okay, yes. That's where come reading your documents and seeing who is the grantor, who's the grantee, because only the grantor is the one that's being notarized. So that kind of thing, you got to get to know your documents really well and follow the, the words they give you. They'll and talk. it does. It does get easier, Bruce. Trust me, when you get in here and you get a few of these under your belt, it's, you'll start to recognize or well, quick, luckily, more quickly recognize them. Luckily, no, uh, luckily uh, uh, Notary Stars will, has a hotline. So if I ever get into anything too bad, then I'll just give Ronnie a call. Good. Are you a Notary to Pro st student? No, I'm not. And I actually started my education with uh, with another company with somebody that not a lot of people respect. And so I went back to Ronnie, Ronnie's continuing education in order to round out my knowledge of Arizona documents, because this gentleman was from California with whom I learned at first. And, uh, and I went to Ronnie's continuing education before I felt comfortable doing anything in the state. And he's great. He'll teach you a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Bill, can Thank I you. interject on that question with the, with the warranty deed? Because I had that same question and I was in that probably that same class and it was regarding the statute. And Beth, Beth, it wasn't your class, but it was with Edie. And it was the statutory warranty deed. And my question was, it might be the same, was explain the difference in the buyer to the seller because Eden was saying, we do not sign the statutory warranty deed. So my question was ver verify with Carol, is it? The buyers must initial or not notarize. It's all about the statutory warranty deed. But you're saying that if it's the seller, you don't because the seller is not in front of you, which is what Bill said. Is that correct? Are we talking about the same document? Well, I wasn't a part of that training, but sometimes what happens is whenever there's a buyer buying a property, the seller has a, a warranty deed that basically transfers the property from them to the buyer. And mm -hmm. sometimes that will have been signed and notarized already, but sometimes it's not. So what okay. it's basically just saying is some, some of them have an initial where the buyer just acknowledged that this is going to be recorded after uh, this thing funds. Uh, and then the who's ever going to be the notary for the seller is the one responsible for notarizing that document. And you're and often you're get seller's documents and buyer's documents, and it'll say on the buyer's read and approved with a little line for the initial. Right. Did that clarify, Beth? Yes, thank you. Sorry to interject there. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Great question. Thanks for bringing it, Bruce. All right. Making pretty good time here. Lula's iPhone. Thanks for being here. You want to tell us what state you're in and how we can help? Hi, I'm from Pennsylvania. 
And um, I just have a couple questions. Sorry, I was upstairs. Now I have to go downstairs to where all my, my questions were. As I was listening, um, and I'm trying to get my website going, um, did you put into the ch chat, um, I guess, Barb's information? who could help with the SEO things? Uh, not with the SEO. Barbara does the website design. So she can help okay, you with the, the website. Websites. Okay. And, and then if you need help with the SEO, I do have a notary designed by notary for notary search engine optimization course. That I can include oh, okay. That, okay. You have that course. Yep, okay. Exactly. Oh, okay. Um, or if you're in Sign and Thrive, we have a recording of a 12-week training course in phase five as well. Okay, phase five. All right. After you do all of them, it's like you forget what was in there. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, gosh. Okay. Who can help? Hmm. Okay. And um, as far as the thank you apps go, um, as I, I have, I'm trying a couple of them and I don't know if you have tried this one. I know you mentioned one and I don't know if you've tried one. Oh, give me one second. Uh, thank you, Pro. Nope, never heard of them. Okay. I've used send right. out cards. I forget the one. Beth, you actually could turn me on to the one that I think you use. Uh, and then I do handwritten, which I've toggled between the years on it. Oh, okay. Um, but with technology now, there's a lot more of those types of apps that are out. Oh, okay. All right. Because I've been trying to find something that was inexpensive. And um, I don't know. For so, I found this Thank You Pro, which isn't expensive at all. It's actually free. Um, and um, so, and and that was, and and that's it. That I just wanted to figure out what other thank you sites you have um, come across that you, you like. Yeah, I didn't get, get into a whole bunch of experimentation. Number one, I started with send out cards, and I loved it, and I still continue to love it. It is um, a little on the pricier side, but the customization has been worth it, and it serves its purpose with me. And then uh, again, there was one other one, Beth is the one that you, I got Beth's card and it had that their logo on it. So I tried it and it worked mm -hmm. really well as well. And it was uh, much more, much more inexpensive, but still the flow of send out cards. I always go back there, uh, but those okay. are the only, that's the only experimentation I did. And then handwriting them has always been the least expensive. It's just when I handwrite, I, it's real easy for me to push it off to the end. And then I never do them. So if I do send out cards, it's one of the things, it's one of the four or five things I do after every single appointment. So I stay right on top of it. Touch I note. Thank you, Beth. It's called touch note, Lula. Carol, I I'm used, sorry, go I ahead. I use Jackie Larson. Uh, I oh, use yeah. that skill. I love that one. And then they send it. You don't have any postage or anything and people enjoy them. And those are special. There is a fee for it, but it's not that much because you can send it. Uh, endless numbers of them every month. Yeah, that's the get, Jackie Lawson e-card, right? So that's yeah, an actual email great. card, animated email card. Mm -hmm. And they're beautiful. Awesome. Okay. Dan Trell thank Sims. You. Yeah, my pleasure, Lula. Thanks for being here. Dan Trell Sims, thank you for being here. Tell everybody what state you're in and how we can help. All right, cool. Y'all can hear me, right? Sure can. Awesome. I'm in the state of Texas. Um, I wanted to ask a question because, um, you know, Jenny, uh, she said she was, um, you know, just starting off, hadn't got that many signings. And Denise, she said that she just got her, um, you know, got finished her test. And kind of like me, I'm still in like the, um, the middle stages where I haven't got any business, but I'm still just trying to like learn as much as I can. I was wondering if you had any tips to maybe kind of know. I wanted to know what would be your take on what you would do, you know, just to kind of keep our mind fresh, you know, and. Like what will we do in the meantime, if that makes sense? Yeah. Well, great question. Um, so there's a lot that plays into this because it kind of depends on your situation. Like where's the fire, right? 
Um, when I got into this business, I had to make it work. I mean, I had everything. My world was crumbling. I couldn't make any money. I couldn't pay my bills. I had five or six different businesses. I couldn't pay myself. I had to make this work. So I was hungry. Uh, so I made it. I made it work and I pounded the pavement and I found ways to build relationships. What drives me crazy just from, on a personal level is I can't just sit back and wait for the phone to ring. I cannot be reliant on other people for my sake. Like it drives me crazy. So I have to be doing something. So that's why I, the, the, my kind of system came out the way it did. I p made a list of who I wanted to work with. I started reaching out, connecting, pinging, going to a networking meeting, calling the signing company. I used to call escrow officers and just say, hey, I'm dropping documents around the corner. Uh, can I bring you a coffee or by any chance, you got anything for me? And mm -hmm. that actual, that shaking the tree actually panned out sometimes. And mm -hmm. how it would happen though, is I get one signing. She goes, oh, by the, well, I have, I have a refi tonight at seven. You want that? I'm like, sure, why not? You know, I don't want to act all desperate, but I'm like, oh my God, I, may, I might be able to eat this week. <laughs> um, but then as soon as you're got the wheels turning and you're moving on the road, it's like law of attraction starts happening. That mo This business loves momentum. So when those wheels start moving, signings start coming. And I would, I'd get that seven o'clock. And then one of my old clients from six months ago would call. And then all of a sudden I have a full week because I'm taking action to do it. So number one, follow the guidelines that Carol, Laura, and I do. I know there's some mixed opinions out there about how many signing companies to sign up with, but if your phone's not ringing and dinging right now, then you don't have enough companies. So sign up with 100, sign up with 150, 200 if you have to. Get that phone ringing and dinging. You can weed them out later. Right now, we need, we need business. So get those signing companies, start cultivating uh, relationships with signing companies. If you want to start building networks with real estate agents, kind of the peripheral, they're all event, they're all going to introduce you to the people you need to meet. And sometimes just that you meet exactly who you need to meet right away. One person changes everything in this business. Carol, do you have any suggestions for Dantrell? Uh, no, I think you said it perfectly. It's just work, work. Don't sit and sit back on you on your laurels and wait for it to come to you because it's not going to happen. You've got to be proactive in your own success. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that I've taken several coaching calls over the last three weeks, I think. And they're all, they're all from, well, not all of them, but the ones that are like, Oh, this business, business isn't working. You know, my phone's not ringing. I might have to go back and get another job. They're all of them. Every single one of them haven't followed the, the rules. You know, how many signing companies have you signed up with? Well, six, but it's, you know, it's, it's a pain in the ass. I don't want to sign up with a hundred. Well, nobody does. It's the, that's the worst part of this business is signing up with signing companies, but it pays off. It's worth it. You got to do it, put it in because it will pay off. So you got to ask yourself, do you want a reason to succeed or an excuse to fail at this? Because whatever you're looking for, you're going to find it. That's what we, we go through all the time with some of the graduates, not all of them, but we provide them with a list of four and five star companies, 125. And then, but we'll hear, well, what do I do now? Well, have you been signing up with those companies? Have you been calling, reminding them that you're there? Because those people that are doing it are busy. They're like, they graduate and they're busy. But these, there's other people that just want their hand held. And you can't be one of those people and be successful. You have to, you have to get out there and use your own energy to impact your life. Own your business. How'd that, how'd that help, Dantrell? Uh, that definitely helped. That reson resonated with me a lot. You know, it's definitely kind of, um, it's different. You know, like I said, everybody's situation is different. Uh, but I'm the type of person, you know, I have dedication. And I, I want to, you know, strive for the best. But sometimes, and I saw one of your, um, you and Laura's thing with the NNA, it was like, um, damn. <laughs> it was a, a meeting about uh, building uh, your relationships, you know, in the business. and Collaboration? Um, yeah, collaboration. Yeah, yeah, collaborating in your notary business. And um, one, of the, one of the things y'all said, y'all were like, you know, don't move past this point if you haven't reached this point, because, you know, things are kind of going to fall apart. You know, you want to make sure that you um, cross all your T's and dot all your I's 
you know, before you start the next, um, you know, the next sentence. So, um, yeah, that's all, you know, that really definitely helped out. <laughs> um, I just kind of wanted to get your take on that because I've already, you know, already have like uh, your PDF file that you down uh, um, on your website about the 10, uh, you know, your commitment to daily dues. Do, yeah. The daily dues. Yep. Um, but I found that in my position, it's just, you know, I have note cards, you know, that, you know, I wrote, wrote all of them down on note cards. And so I'm just like, kind of, I know what, I know what to do, but <laughs> just want to get your, your take um, on, um, you know, what, on your answer. Dantrell, so thank you for that. Dantrell, this is Carol. You're very charming. You're thank very you. energetic. You got a great smile. <laughs> You're going to be terrific. Just work at it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you, Carol. And- and I think that's also based on what you said is, you know, you don't want to jump too far ahead. Like number one, it's really easy to get excited about this when you see the possibilities and you see the daily dues and you see, oh my gosh, people are making 300 grand a year at this, but nothing matters until you get the first signing. So get the first signing, then get the second, then get the third, get that traction going and we can figure the rest out later. I mean, we all did, right? Carol, Laura, me, we didn't have training when we came into this. There were no forums. People didn't help each other. Like loan signing agents were like under the radar. They were super secret agents. They didn't tell other people they did this. You know, so there wasn't, there wasn't resources. You guys have a huge advantage. And the downside to that sometimes is overwhelm from information, strategies, everybody, every single person has found a way to make this business succeed. And that's amazing. But at the same time, you just got to pick away and just do it. There was no training when I started yeah. in 2000, 2001. There was none. Yep. Awesome. Dan Trail, good luck. And let us know how we can support you. Guys, We I think we have time for at least one more. Um, Randy, Randy, you got your hand back. Wow, we're, we went all the way around. Randy, you want to unmute? Um, so I've got a clarification. Clarification explanation on the warranty deed, and then I have a question. Um, so on the warranty deed, it has a, usually at the top a spot for the buyers to initial, and then it has the language of the warranty deed saying that the sellers are giving up their rights to the property to the buyers. And then the second page has a, the signer signature and then a notary block. Right. So if, it, if it's a buyer's package, all they're doing is the buyers are initially saying that they want, they agree to that transaction and they want that to happen and we are not notarizing anything. And I think that was the confusion on that, on that part of it. Um, and then my question is talking to a couple of people at some signing services or with some signing services. Um, and I don't know if, if you guys haven't can uh, uh, give some input on this, but it seems like right now with a lot of the direct business that I'm trying to get, all I'm being told by title officers is that they're so busy that they just, they're going to use signing services and they're going to continue to use signing services because they're too busy right now to um, with all the refis um, to actually deal with getting notaries on their own. Um, And do you guys see that as a trend or do you guys have an opinion on that subject? Yeah, um, definitely not. I wouldn't say a trend. I think that certain, every company, every individual, every escrow officer has the right to ch- make that decision. So here's what I've found. If that's what they tell you, it's, it might be true. It might also be a brush off and they don't want to deal with it. You've got to find a way to build that relationship. And number one, like I'm trying to think, I mean, every now and then I'll, I'll have that conversation. And I'm like, well, we use this signing company. To me, that's another opportunity. I can get in with that signing company. I can still try to build a relationship and maybe I can be the preferred vendor on that. I love it when escrow officers are loyal to a signing company, to another loan loan signing agent, whatever it is. But if they're loyal, I want, I'm in the wings. I'm like, I want to, they're at the top of my list because loyalty is hard to come by in business. And I know that relationships change. I know that people retire, people move, any number of things can happen. And if that escrow officer has the courage to tell me, no, I have this person I work with, then I want to be in her orbit or her atmosphere. Uh, So I see that as an opportunity. Um, I think we have to be really careful too. And I, cause again, I hear this quite a bit. Oh, everyone does this. No, that's not true. Not everyone, never and always is really dangerous language in this business. It's every now and then you might hit a trend where, Three different companies tell you the same thing, but there are hundreds of others 
uh, that they're going to tell you something new. So you just keep moving until you get the answer you want to hear. Carol, Laura, anything you'd like to tack on to that as we close out? Laura, no, I see, I see it. You said it all. That's great. Laura's going to unmute. I see those wheels turning. <laughs> I had to swing it around here. Um, I didn't have anything to add to that, but I know we're wrapping up and I just want to make sure that Matt's announcement was seen by everybody. There's a survey going on. Please, um, if you haven't already, take an opportunity to participate in that and, and be a part of the voice of notaries uh, because that's the only way we get better uh, notary friendly legislation. It's how we uh, are heard over the big tech guys. So please, if you haven't, give us something to work with by uh, filling that out. Thank Love you. it. Thank you for highlighting that. And thank you, Matt, for doing that. We'll send that out again via email as well. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Sorry we didn't get to all the questions, but I really appreciate you um, coming on, supporting Carol Ray at notary to pro Laura B. We're at coachmelaura.com and myself at notarycoach.com. We really appreciate it. Thank you for growing yourself and your business. Have a great week. Bye-bye from Texas. Bye-bye. <laughs>